Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Develop with Maven in Eclipse. Today I'm going to talk about Maven multi-module projects and what they are for and what their advantages are. So to begin with let's consider the situation where we want to develop a web server and a client for that web server. Um, of course in the end I need to deploy the server and the client in different locations, so I wouldn't want them to be separated. But then again, obviously the client somehow depends on the server and I would like everything to stay in sync, so I somehow want them to be grouped together. So uh, Maven can actually help me do this. And uh, in a couple of seconds I'm going to show you how. First, let's start off by creating a Maven project and say it's a simple one, default location, and we're going to tell it, let uh, call it let's develop, that's our group ID, and the project itself is, say, weather forecast. That's going to be our parent project, so I'm going to give it the packaging type POM, which is uh, somehow a, a virtual group of, of projects, so it's not going to uh, have an artifact built from this project like a jar file or war file, but uh, it's going to be only a virtual super uh, project uh, our concrete modules will be part of. And actually I can skip the rest, finish this and say, okay, this is, this is our parent project. And the first thing I want to do is actually configure my project defaults like, like I did the last time. So uh, I want to configure the the Maven compiler or the, the Java compiler rather, the version I configured, uh, I showed you in the last episode how to configure that. Um, I want to do it here to have this available for all my projects. Okay, and here's how I'm going to do this. I first create the build section and then I insert something called uh, plugin management. Plugin management is much like the plugin section, only that it will not declare a dependency, but only manage how dependencies are configured in subprojects. So there's plugins, and there's, of course, plugin, and this one is going to have the group ID uh, org Apache Maven plugin, I guess, uh, the artifact ID is maven compiler plugin version, let's take 3.1, and we want to have a configuration, and we have want to have a source element here, which says java 1.7, and we have a target version here, uh, which also says java 1.7. So I save this and it actually has no, no implications right now, but it will have soon. Okay, so for the next part, I want to start creating uh, the web server site. So what I do is create a new project and say this is going to be a Maven module rather than a Maven standalone project. And uh, again, I skip the archetype selection because it doesn't matter here. I give this project a new, uh, this module a name, say, uh, forecast uh, server, and I select a parent project, which is the weather, weather forecast I selected here. And that's actually already everything I'm going to do. So now we see we have a second project, weather forecast, added here. It's a no normal uh, job project. And we already see that we have the Java 1.7 uh, library included here. So the changes we made to the POM file of the parent project already took effect on our uh, child project, on the, the server project. And uh, we're going to have a look into this uh, POM file of the, of, the, of the server side. And we actually see that there's no group ID and no version only an artifact ID, which is exactly the name I entered uh, for the project. And then we have here a reference to the parent project, which is let's develop weather forecast in the version 001 snapshot. So 
What's happening now, if I take a look into the effective POM, I can't ignore the lower part, just, just look at the upper part here, is that we have declared a parent project, and from the parent project it took over both the group ID and the version for a project, so we don't need to manage that. Our actual POM looks just like that. We have the parent dependency and we have the forecast server artifact ID of our new project, but everything else is inherited from uh, the parent project, the weather forecast uh, thing. So next thing I'm going to do is add some add a class here. Let's say um, we have a model on our server which is the the actual forecast is going to be part of the model. So it's let's develop uh, weather forecast model. There's going to be a forecast object in there. I'm not going to define how this actually works because it doesn't matter here, but I have this model object now in my forecast project. And what I want to do now is create another child project which is going to be the actual client of that web server. So I create another project. Again, I'm going to create a Maven module, skip the archetype selection and say forecast client and again the parent project is going to be my weather forecast uh, parent project. Finish this here and you can see again it added almost the same thing only that we have a different uh, name here. Okay and what I'm going to do now is declare a dependency between these two projects. So the client actually depends on the server. So what I want to do is say forecast server it's going to show me a jar dependency, which is effect effectively the project I have down here. And I say, okay, this is a compile time dependency, and I just edit and save. So you see, what you see now is that Maven dependencies appeared here, and you see that there is a reference to the uh, forecast server project. So what I can do now on the client side, if I create a class, let's uh, say forecasts display. Uh, of course, in let's develop um, weather forecast um, uh, client view is that I can actually uh, use the the classes the the forecast model um, from the parent project to define, for example, a field of type uh, forecast yeah. semicolon. Okay, so now I have two different projects and they one depends on the other so one can see everything that's in the other and the other actually can see what's in, in the client project. Okay, what's now the, the advantage of having this parent project aside from the dependency, which I could declare for any two arbitrary Eclipse project as well? Um, the advantage is that I can actually build this project as one uh, project. So I can build this parent project and Maven will automatically figure out for me what the right dependency is. Um, there's a component in Maven called the reactor who that will figure out uh, in which order these uh, projects have to be built in order for the whole thing to be compilable. So it will in this case uh, see that the first thing to build is the server because the client depends on it. The second thing it will build is the client and then we have two jar files in this case um, that are completely compiled. So what I can do, I will show you this quickly is just run as uh, maven build. Ah, sorry, we will use one of the pre-configured, no, I don't want to save that, um, one of the pre-configured runs because it's uh, it's faster. Didn't I do that? Anyway, I'm going to use maven test for now. And what you can see on the, on the console output is that the reactor configure the build order and said, okay, the parent thing needs to be built first. Uh, POM project isn't really built, there's only some metadata created. 
The next thing is going to be the server, as I told you, and the last thing is going to be the client that's going to be built. Then, then we see here that it's building the weather forecast, a parent project. Next, it's building the server, copying resources, compiling, um, test resources, test compiling, then actually test execution, but there are no tests yet. And then it's going to start the same thing for the client, resources, compiler, test resources, test compile, test execution, with the uh, server dependency already configured. So Maven resolves all this for us. That's about it for now, but I'm going to show you one more nice thing about uh, parent and child projects, which is dependency management. So what you've seen before in the parent project is that I configured a plugin, in this case the compiler plugin, to use Java 1.7 for all of the uh, child modules. But there's something else we can use here with it, which is uh, dependency management. Um, dependency management is, is similar to, to plugin management, uh, only in this case it's not part of the build. Um, it's, only, it's only declaring dependencies. So what do we have here? We have the dependency management section, we have dependencies, we have a dependency and I'm going to declare here that um, actually I think I'm going to use the UI for that. I'm not going to do this uh, manually because there is UI support for that. So we go to dependencies and you see here that there's a dependency side and the dependency management side. So what I want to do is say org junit uh, is going to be added as a dependency to my dependency management. Um, actually, it's only JUnit, I think, uh, to find the right, right dependency. Let me see, where is it? Somewhere there should be the JUnit. Ah, here it is, JUnit dependency. This is a test dependency. Uh, so I add it here um, and now you can see what I actually uh, plan to, to type out manually. So dependency management, dependencies, dependency on group J unit, artifact J unit, version and scope test. So now that I declared this in the dependency management, um, it did not automatically appear as a dependency in my, in my sub projects. But as soon as I add the J unit dependency here, I already see that it, this is a managed dependency, so it does not add a version here. Actually, I'm not sure. I'm just going. I think this is not not necessary, but uh, I'm going to add this dependency, and you see here that this is a managed dependency, and it's managed that it is this version uh, 4.11 and the version test, as you can see in the pom file. Um, I guess I can even skip the uh, the the scope here. I just declare okay. I have a dependency on JUnit, JUnit, and it automatically selects the version and the scope from the parent project, which means that automatically all of my sub-projects that uh, use the same dependency, use this dependency in the same version without me having to bother about that. Um, and actually it's even nicer because um, if I say select 4.10 here, then uh, Eclipse will give me a warning and say, oh, look at this, there's an, an overriding of a managed version, so you're probably going to, or you may go to uh, run into uh, compatibility issues here because in this child project you use another uh, version of the dependency than probably in other child uh, projects. So I can just quick fix that, remove this thing, reform it, and everything is done. Okay, I guess that's it for now. Um, at least I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any comments or questions about Maven mod multi modules and what you can do with them, just drop me a method and uh, a message. Uh, sorry, and I'm glad to answer your questions. If you liked uh, this episode, please consider subscribing to my channel. Of course, you're free to like it or share uh, the video with your friends. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter and have a look at the other things I do, like Let's Develop Code Hunt and Let's Develop Conway's Way of Life. 
uh, to see what else I'm doing. And please, please, please give me feedback about all the things I'm doing because I really, I'm, I'm really trying out right now uh, what you guys want to see. So any feedback I can get from you uh, can only help me to make things better and to produce more interesting content for you. Okay, so have a nice time and see you next time.